Church of the Savior, each Sunday we hear scripture readings from something called the lectionary. It's a three-year cycle of readings used by many other churches and denominations uh, to work through the scriptures each week. And the advantage of the lectionary is that it ensures is that it ensures you'll hear readings from all parts of the Bible, not just my favorite parts, <laughs> and not just the parts that we all like. The disadvantage of the lectionary is that sometimes you have to deal with parts of the Bible you don't like. So take today's reading from Proverbs, for example. The first verse in this passage from the New Revised Standard Version, which I t tend to use, reads, who can find a capable wife? It's kind of interesting opening. <laughs> it then describes an image of a woman's role from a patriarchal society thousands of years ago. After I decided to go ahead and use this reading today, I ran across this warning in a commentary on the scriptures by Old Testament professor James Newsom. He says, the fig, uh, he says, this passage presents an enormous difficulty to the preacher. <laughs> for the simple reason that it embraces an understanding of the place of women in society that cannot be condoned today. To be sure, ancient Israel was not, not of one mind about the role of women any more than is our contemporary Western world. Some texts seem to imply that a woman has, was little more than her husband's property where uh, in the catalog of the man's property the wife is enrolled before the man's slaves and livestock but after his house. In general terms, it may be said that ancient Israel viewed an adult woman as a valued human being primarily in terms of her worth to her husband. It must be stressed that ancient Israel was not alone in this attitude, for patriarchy was a social system that transcended national or ethnic boundaries. And fortunately, where's, is Paula here? <laughs> fortunately, we're past that, right, Paula? <laughs> no, we're not. <laughs> All right. And while it may accurately be said that both Old and New Testament sow the seeds for the ideal of the equality of all persons, regardless of gender, it simply is not possible to transfer into our own setting the Old Testament understanding of a woman's role in society. Therefore, he says, the best that a preacher may do with this present passage is to avoid it. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks a lot. <laughs> So why didn't somebody think of that before they put it in the lectionary, right? <laughs> Yet when I read the passage again, I was struck by the same thing that Alex and I noticed when we looked at this passage together a few weeks ago for something that was written in a culture where women were valued, quote, in terms of her worth to her husband or even, quote, little more than her husband's property. It's striking that this passage contains so many images of strength, skill, and leadership. Even James Newsom concedes that the passage grants, quote, a large measure of independence to a woman of that time. Over the years, I've learned that the scriptures don't always give up their secrets easily. So, for example, according to Newsom, in Hebrew, the 22 verses of this passage form a perfect alphabetic acrostic. That's a literary structure used by Hebrew writers in which each line of a poem begins with a different letter of the Hebrew alphabet in order from A to Z, or in Hebrew, Aleph to Ta. And that tells you that this passage is thoughtfully constructed and poetically distinct. There's something going on here. The author is working on something here. <laughs> Newsom also points out that the female figure of divine wisdom herself seems to lie behind the text, and it may be that the passage is really an allegory on the nature of wisdom in general. And that possibility is strengthened by the fact that the first Hebrew word in verse 27 sounds almost exactly like the Greek word for wisdom at that time, a feminine word that was sometimes even used almost as a, an alternative divine name, Sophia. If you take the scriptures at face value, or you try to take them literally, you often miss some of what's going on in the scriptures. And, and this is what I love about the scriptures, actually. Um, when you dig into them a little bit more, unexpected things tend to show up. A lot gets lost just in translation from ancient Hebrew or Greek into English. Emily Wilson, a Greek scholar and the first woman to translate Homer's Odyssey into English, said this about translation. She said, if you're going to admit that stories matter, then it matters how we tell them. The whole question of what is the story is going to depend on the language, the words that you use and that you choose to use. 
The fact is that it's possible to translate the same lines from ancient Greek a hundred different times, and all of them are defensible in entirely different ways. And that tells you something, she said. 